the value of, of a summit like this for, for AI in general is it, it brought together a very interesting mix of stakeholders so that we can begin to have a broader range of conversations. You know, in, in particular, one of the things I found both encouraging and surprising was how frequently those topics of education and equity and access uh, came up across many different sessions. Uh, that that uh, so within the computer science education space, those topics are high priority topics, and so I know my members would be really thrilled to have heard many of the conversations which went on here. In terms of the value for CSTA and computer science teachers, so CSTA represents almost 26,000 teachers across 145 countries, and these are teachers who are teaching in K-12. And one of those things which is happening now within computer science is we're starting to see a, a segmentation of computer science like we have in, in science itself. So in science, for example, if you went through high school in the U.S. for science, you would take you know, earth science, biology, chemistry, physics. And we're starting to see that now within, uh, the US, uh, within computer science, meaning that um, you know, there's cybersecurity, there's data analytics, there's artificial intelligence, there's robotics, and we see that amongst our members, that, that they get interested in computer science and they go down a pathway. And I think that idea of making computer science contextually relevant is very important. So the value of the summit, from my perspective in part, is being able to make those connections and understand what should we be teaching kids around artificial intelligence, and then in order to be able to teach that to kids, what do teachers need to know about artificial intelligence? So making those connections and, and knowing who's been thinking about those topics has been, at least for me, tremendously valuable. Well, I know when we start thinking about, so from a, from a teacher perspective, you know, the way in which we might use the guidelines which come out of a meeting like this is, again, as we think about standards and what what might teachers teach or what do students need to learn? I think the guidelines, again, one of the things I found really interesting about the summit, it, the guidelines provide a really good match between the concept, the technical concepts and the social concepts. And I think, you know, if we really want AI for good or, or computing for good, we need to have those connections. You know, we have to think about both the ec ethical and social implications as well as the technical. The other place where I see it playing a, a really big role is one of the things we know from, from what research we have in this space is that particularly young women are more attracted or are more likely to stay within computing or computer science when that social context is relevant or, or apparent. And, and I got so many neat ideas here about ways in which we could think about introducing AI within the social context. Why does learning AI matter? And, and I think particularly for young women who are, who are very underrepresented within computer science. AI has, I think, that potential to really make learning customized to what an individual student needs to learn best. The other way in which I see AI playing out in interesting ways is in when we teach kids about artificial intelligence and we teach AI and other CS topics, we start to see some really interesting new ideas emerge. And the example that comes to mind to me is actually uh, was just sent to me about two days ago from someone who heard I was going to be here. And uh, there's a, a teacher in Poland who's teaching 15 year olds, and she was teaching them artificial intelligence. And one of the things which they did this year was created a uh, Facebook bot using AI techniques and I think they call it Zoe for zone, zone of Open Education. And Zoe was designed to help the students better prepare for their physics exams, their, their uh, physics studying. And one of the things that they found was that the students actually did perform better on their physics exams using um, Zoe as a study tool as compared to the methods which they had used in the past. Um, and so I think you see these ways in which students begin to think about how do they make their world different or better using these technologies if we've taught them what they are and how to use them. So I think that's, that's a really powerful impact that AI could have in education where since students, their first experience in life, their first job in life in a sense is, is education, um, they themselves could really help with that transformation using AI.